This is Alan at the Roanoke County Library. I'm going to talk to you today about how to access Ancestry Library Edition from home. You can't normally do that. You normally have to come into the building. Uh, the buildings are closed at the moment. And so Ancestry is being generous and they're allowing people to access Ancestry Library Edition through our website. Uh, you will need to have your library card. And then the first thing we're gonna do is go to rvl.info, rvl.info, and I'll show you how to do that. I'll click up there. And I do enter. And then you're gonna to wanna to log in up at the top. You can see mine says log out because I'm already logged in. You're gonna to wanna to click on log in. That's what yours will say up there. And you put in your library card number with no spaces. And then below that you put in your PIN, which should be RVL, unless you've changed it. Once you've logged in, you should see a screen like I'm looking at right here. On the left, click on Ancestry Login. And in the middle, click on Ancestry Access Link. And this is Ancestry Library Edition. Now this is not the regular Ancestry that you would pay for with a subscription because you can't put your tree in here. It's not a personalized page, um, but it is better than a, than a basic Ancestry subscription because you can access international records too. So this is really quite an opportunity. Um, so if you wanna search, you click on begin searching. And then you fill this out, you type in somebody's name. And so put information in there. You don't want to hog wild and put too much information. You know, the kids' names and the wife's names and the death date and all that kind of stuff because you probably won't find them with that much information, at least not to start with. Um, what I've got here is probably good, where they might have lived, birth year. And then you click on search. and we get the results here. Um, and so you can see the US Social Security application there. On the left, you can see the categories, censor and census and voter lists, birth, marriage and death, military. So you can click on those categories. I'm gonna click on census and voter lists. And so it gives me the census records. And then I need to go down until I find the right person here. And I did here in the 1940 census. Remember they do census, uh, the census every 10 years. The 1940 census is the most recent census that has been released. So I'm gonna click on 1940 United States Federal Census. And you've got a transcription of the information there on the census. It's good to keep that transcription, but you want to go to the original record. When you're doing genealogy, you want to do everything you can to avoid mistakes. And it is so easy to make mistakes. Um, so if you're relying on somebody else's transcription of a document, you're allowing a possibility of a mistake. So you wanna to go to the original document whenever you can. And this has the original census over on the left. I can click on view and that will bring up the census. And I can see the name there in yellow. When you find something about genealogy, you want to save that information. You don't wanna write it down by hand because 
you might make a mistake. You want to copy it. You want to save it. Do everything you can to avoid errors because there are lots of errors in genealogy. And so one, th one thing you can do in the upper right is you can click on save and that will save that census information. And you can click here on the arrow and go back to this page. And then we can click on all results at the top. And if you wanted to do another search, you could click on edit search and you could put another name in there and do another search. If you have any questions about this or about how to do genealogy, you can give us a call at 777-8782, 777-8782. And my name is Alan.